we're going to prove a beautiful theorem that if you take the sum 1 plus half plus 1 third all the way up to 1 over n, it's never an integer unless n is equal to 1, in which case it's just equal to 1. And watch till the end for a huge revelation about how this is actually connected to the most famous unsolved problem in mathematics. So let's dive into this proof and it's so beautiful and elegant and I'm going to motivate the intuition for you. Okay, so to start off with, what we want to do is we want to assume for a contradiction that hn is an integer. Okay, so we're going to do a proof by contradiction. So we're going to assume that hn is an integer and derive something absurd from that. So assume hn is an integer. And by the way, hn is known as the nth harmonic number. And this series is called the harmonic series. I've done another video on that and I'm going to link it to you at the end of the video. Now we assume hn is an integer for a contradiction. And what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides of this equation, hn equals 1 plus half plus 1 third up to 1 over n, by another integer in a special way. Okay, so I'm going to write it down here. We're going to write out, choose some integer m. We don't know m yet. Okay, I'm going to explain how we're going to come up with m. So we're going to take m times hn is going to equal to m plus m over 2 plus m over 3, all the way up to m over n. Okay, and what our strategy is going to be is we're going to choose m so that all but one of the terms in the right hand side of the equation is an integer, but one term is not. And that's going to solve our problem for us. Why is that? Well, assume that one of the terms, okay, we don't know which term, assume that some term m over i is not an integer when we've chosen m carefully, but all the other terms are integers. Then what we can do is we can bring all the other terms that are integers to the left hand side of the equation by subtraction and get on the left hand side that something that is a sum and differences of integers, but on the right hand side is just m over i which is not an integer. And that will be a contradiction because a sum and difference of integers cannot be not an integer. It has to also be an integer. Okay, so we want to choose m so that all but one term on the right hand side is an integer. Now how do we do it so that all of the terms on the right hand side is an integer? Of course we know that m times hn is an integer because we've assumed for a contradiction that hn is an integer. So how do we choose m so that all the terms on the right hand side are an integer and then modify m so that one of the terms is no longer an integer? Okay, so the simplest way is to clear denominators is to choose an m that is div divided by or has 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. up to n as factors. In that case, all the terms on the right hand side will be integers. So if we take m is the LCM of 1 through n, okay, this is the least common multiple of all the numbers from 1 through n, then it's going to be the case that all the terms on the right hand side are integers. In fact, you could also take n factorial. Okay, n factorial is going to be bigger than the LCM. LCM is the smallest number that has 1 to up to n as factors. Now that's all well and good, but we want to make sure just one of the numbers is not an integer on the right hand side, and this won't do. So how do we modify it? So what we can do is let's say we want to make m over i not an integer. So instead of taking the LCM of 1 through n, why don't we take the LCM of 1 through n except for i? Let's just delete i. So instead, okay, so that, that is fine. I mean, that makes sure all the terms on the right hand side are integers. Instead, let's take m is equal to the LCM of 1, 2, all the way up to i minus 1, comma i plus 1, dot, 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 n. Okay, let's take this. And a cool notation, you know, if you have to, we're basically saying I've omitted i from the LCM, but a cool math notation is I can just write it like this. Some people write it like this. You just put a little hat over the i and then you put up to n. So what that tells you is you're omitting i, okay? Just a fancy little notation to show you. Now what happens if we do this? Well, the thing is that it's still possible for m over i to be an integer. Of course, in this case, certainly m over everything else is going to be an integer because it's the LCM of everything else, but it's also possible for m over i to be an integer. For an example, suppose we took the LCM of, let me give you an example, just 1, 2, 3, 4, okay? If I deleted 2 from this, okay, if I just deleted 2 and just took the LCM of 1, 3, and 4, that would still have 2 as a divisor because 4 is going to divide the LCM and 2 goes into 4. So in other words, if you delete the i, if there's some other number that has i as a divisor, like 2 times i, for example, that is less than or equal to n, that won't do. That would still make sure that m over i is an integer and then all the terms on the right hand side are integers. We just want to make sure one is not so we can get a contradiction. So that doesn't work, okay? So we may want to say, okay, so how do we choose i? We want to choose i so that 2i 
is not less than or equal to n. Okay, we want to choose i with that property. Is that enough for us? Well, actually it's not, and let me show you why. It's not enough because I'm going to show you the following example. I'm going to take the LCM of 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 7, okay? And I'm going to delete 6 from that, okay? So instead of taking the LCM of, let's say, 4, 5, 6, 7, I'm just going to cut out 6 and then say, you know, is 6 still a divisor of this? And the answer is yes. The reason is that the LCM of all these numbers is still as 2 as a factor and it's still as 3 as a factor. So it's still going to have 6 equals 2 times 3 as a factor. So deleting 6 is not enough to ensure that 6 still doesn't go into the LCM of the remaining numbers. So how do we do this? How do we ensure that m over i is not an integer for 1i? How do we choose our i? Okay, so what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to do the following trick, and I want you to drop a comment down below if there are other choices of i that will work. I will show you one choice of i. And here's the choice of i that I'm going to show you. What I'm going to do for choosing i or choosing m is I'm going to take m to be, I'm going to choose i to equal to 2 power k as the maximal power of 2 that is less than or equal to n. Okay, the maximum power of 2 that is less than or equal to n. Okay, the largest power of 2 that's less than or equal to n. And I'm going to choose m to equal to the LCM of everything except i. So m is going to be the LCM of all the numbers 1, 2, all the way up to n except this 2 power k. Okay, I'm putting a hat over it to say we are meeting it, remember the notation, all the way up to n. And now I claim that 2 power k does not go into this LCM. So in other words, m over 2 power k is not an integer, which you write it in this way. It's not an integer. Of course, m over, m over anything else is going to be an integer because it's the LCM of everything else as always. But why is it that m over 2 to the k is not an integer? Well, the reason is that because it's the LCM, there is no way to get 2 to the k from the other factors if we're taking the least common multiple. So why is that? Why is it the case that the largest power of 2, that is a factor of the LCM, is actually 2 to the k minus 1, which would then imply that m over 2 to the k is not an integer? Well, because it's the LCM, if you think about it, what is the largest power of 2 that you need so that every number from 1 through n except 2 to the k is a factor of that number? Well, you just need 2 to the k minus 1. Because any number from 1 through n that is not 2 to the k, the largest power of 2 that will divide it is 2 to the k minus 1. So for the LCM, the largest power of 2 you need to have all the numbers except 2 to the k as a divisor is just going to be 2 to the k minus 1. In general, if you want to find the LCM of numbers 1 through n, you look at the largest power of each prime that is less than or equal to n, p1, p2, p3, etc., you multiply all the largest powers of those primes, and that's going to be the LCM of n. That's an exercise. Drop a comment down below as to why that's true. But that actually proves m over 2 to the k is not in z. And now we're going to finalize our proof. And I'm just going to write it out very, very precisely what the proof is going to be. And it's very beautiful. So if we take that choice of m, we have chosen m very carefully, the LCM of 1 through n except 2 to the k, where 2 to the k is the maximum power of 2 that's less than or equal to n, then what we can do is we can observe that by our initial assumption, m h n is an integer. And we know that m over i is an integer for all i that is not equal to 2 to the k. And therefore, therefore we know that m over 2 to the k is equal to m times hn minus m minus m over 2 minus m over 3 dot 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 minus m over n, accepting, accepting the m over 2 to the k. Okay, so I'm just going to put a hat over that. Accepting the m over 2 to the k. Um, and that, of course, implies since all the terms here are going to be integers, because we're not including m over 2 to the k, the left-hand side is not an integer, but the right-hand side is. That's our contradiction, and that completes the proof that the nth harmonic number is not an integer. And now I'm going to tell you something super beautiful that I promised you as to why this is connected to the most famous open problem in math. So that is the Riemann hypothesis, that problem. And I'm going to write it down here. So the Riemann hypothesis, it's the most famous unsolved problem in math. It's a millennium prize problem. So it carries a $1 million prize for anyone who solves it. It's considered one of the, basically the most major open problem in mathematics. And I'm not even going to tell you what it is. I'm going to tell you what it is, but not the exact formulation, but an equivalent formulation. And the equivalent formulation is the following, that let sigma of n be the sum of all the divisors of n. Okay, the sum of all divisors of n. Okay, so if n is a natural number, we add all the divisors of n. Okay, so for example, if I take n equals 6 and I look at sigma of 6, that's the sum of all the divisors of 6. It's going to be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 6, which is just going to be 12. That's an example. 
Now, the Riemann hypothesis is equivalent to the statement that sigma of n is less than or equal to hn plus e to the hn times log of hn. For all n with equality, if and only if n is equal to 1. That is the Riemann hypothesis, the most famous open problem in math, where hn is the nth harmonic number. It's going to be 1 plus half plus 1 third up to 1 over n. So here we are saying that the sum of the divisors of n is always less than or equal to hn plus e to the n times log hn. And if n is equal to 1, you can check, of course, that log of 1 is 0. So in that case, you're just going to get h1 is 1, and the left-hand side is 1. So you have equality. But the only time you have equality, according to the Riemann hypothesis, is when n equals 1. And vice versa, if you know the only time you have equality is when n equals 1, and you know this inequality is always true, then you have proven the Riemann hypothesis. So that's a food for thought for you. And I'm going to leave you with one more problem to help you practice, because I don't want to just show you math. I want to teach you math. I want to help you master it. I'm going to ask you the following. Instead of adding up all these numbers, all the reciprocals, what if I modified it very slightly, and I looked at the following sum, 1 plus 1 third plus 1 over 5 plus 1 over 7, all the way up to 1 over 2n plus 1. In other words, the reciprocals of all the odd numbers, okay, up to 2n plus 1, can you prove that's not an integer using the ideas in this video? That's my challenge to you. Drop a comment down below. I'd love to see that. And if you want more beautiful math related to the harmonic series and all sorts of other number theory, please drop a comment down below. Check out my video. It's going to pop up on the screen here. It's about why the harmonic series diverges very elementary way and another fun video on my channel that you're going to love. I wish you all the best and I'm going to see you in one of those videos.